We're going to sing that uh, we bring the sacrifice of praise. It's number uh, 2031 in the new black faith we sing. We didn't have quite enough to fill the pews, so if you don't have one, look around close to you because there should be one either in front of you or behind you.
O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Today's message is the is an introduction to why it was so important that we celebrate Advent, which is Jesus coming. When you think of Advent, it's about Jesus is on the way. Now, as a, a youngster and as a uh, beginning Christian, I always thought that the Christmas season, which is Advent, was a, a lot of fun. We got to decorate. We got to have all the candle lighting, which uh, every through Advent we like the we we like purple and pink candles and a white candle, and we have Christmas Eve service. And for those of you that want to think about looking ahead to things, uh, Christmas Eve service is at 6 p.m. and it's downtown in Pike. So if you are so inclined to enjoy Christmas Eve, we'll be downtown for that one, and we will have one service between my two churches. Now, Christmas Day is on Sunday. Everybody go, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Yeah, just, just when all the grandkids show up to open up packages, right? Christmas morning. It's, it's, uh, Christmas morning on Sunday has and always shall be the pastor's nightmare. Because we want to have church, we want to celebrate baby Jesus coming, but everybody has family stuff. And so, I just decided years and years and years ago, because I'm that old, that I wasn't going to lose any sleep or any worry about Christmas Day being on a Sunday. I'll be here and if and even if Sharon can't be here, I can play guitar and we can do we can do Christmas songs. Now the 18th of December we're having a carol sing right here at 9:30. Uh, the 25th. 18th in town, 25th out here. Oh. Yeah. But now on the 18th, you're doing the one in town. Yes. You are. Yes. Okay, so I have that part. Sir. Yes. Connie tried to straighten me out. It was very difficult for her. Yeah. The 18th, we do carols in town. The 25th, we do carols out here. 25th carols out here. Doing carols. I'll be at home. So. But now the 18th, I'm still here, right? Yes. We don't have we don't have a Sunday morning blended service. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Connie had that confused, and I then I was even more confused. Yeah. Who can believe I was actually more confused than I am normal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a difficult day. Well, we have, we have, I just thank God that we don't have any PA problems here. But downtown, they have PA problems. And now I have page turning problems because I don't know why I'm not on the right page. Well, I'm in Luke 23, the 30, 33rd verse. Actually, I'm going to do, uh, actually, I'm going to do 32. So, chapter 23, starting with verse 32. Raise your hand if you want me to repeat that. Really? <laughs> Sharon coaches me through all of this, and then she raises her hand to try and confuse me further. Hey, In preparation... Oh, okay. Well, I'm, yeah, I get that. Uh, Advent starts next Sunday, and I'm just so tickled that you're having hanging of the greens after church with a luncheon 
and I'll be praying for you while I'm going down town and missing the luncheon and everything. So have fun. I'll miss all miss all of you. Now, Advent. You see, there has to be a reason that God decided to send his only begotten son to earth. There has to be a reason. And the reason is this. <coughs> people are hungry. People are greedy. People are self-serving. People uh, harm other people. People say things, uh, thoughtless things that hurt other people. We are sinful by nature. How many of you are glad to hear that? Nobody? Nobody's glad to hear that. Well, because of that, those facts that were greedy, honorary, hurtful to others, uh, sometimes we exaggerate, which is known as lying, uh, or untruthful. We are people that need baby Jesus to come. So Advent is the time of preparation and celebration for Jesus coming as the little baby. And we understand that when the wise men came and brought gifts, we understand that how wonderful this all blends together and how excited we get over Christmas the celebration that God sent his son Jesus to this world. And sometimes it's difficult when somebody like myself has to remind all of us, and I'm reminding myself also, that we needed baby Jesus to come. And Advent is preparation for the coming of Jesus, not the baby, but the Redeemer, the one that will gather everything up for God, his Father, the Almighty, the Creator. So, we need to understand fully <coughs> why God needed to look after us. So this particular lesson is the reminder that Advent is important. Advent and the season of Lent, which is Easter, they're both a part of understanding why God cares and loves all of us. Loves all of creation, actually. So, when I read this to you, you're going to see how I see this. You know, you're going to hear how I see it. Uh, that this message that is called All I Need is Paradise. Hear the word of God through St. Luke. This is after the trial. This is after Jesus has been flogged. This is after he's carried the beam of his cross to uh, a place called Golgotha. And this is what happened. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the skull. The skull is the translation into more face English of Golgotha. Uh, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, who on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. 
and they cast lots to divide his clothing. That would have been the, the robes that Pilate would have had to put on Jesus. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. <coughs> there was also an inscription over Jesus, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept derailing him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we are we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now I've said through the years that we need to be the people that recall the thief, the repentant thief on the cross. He was the one that his entire, his entire message was to the other criminal on the cross, the cross. They, they, they were surely close together because it would have been a struggle to communicate the way they are tied up and the way they are being tortured uh, unto death. And in his last line to Jesus, he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That's his entire repentance. Do we have a record of that person's baptism? Somebody shout. No. No, we don't have a record of his baptism. We don't even know his name. The only thing we know is that he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied very simply, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. And in this particular translation that I'm reading from it has paradise capitalized. And because of the nature of the Greek language that Dr. Luke, St. Luke, would have had this pen, uh, there's no capitalization, there's no punctuation. So when we bring it forward through the centuries to English, of course, our language is extremely complex when it comes to capitalization and punctuation, which Greek doesn't use. It's just spaces between the, the words. We know this, for sure. Paradise sounds pretty good to me. Everybody say amen. amen. <laughs> Thank you. Now, we, we mentioned Jim Steele, the pastor that was at Andersonville. We mentioned that I've been around Jim Steele since we helped with uh, Pastor Steve Kemper. Was that the pastor before me? Rick. His funeral was right here. Rick Kemper. Huh? Rick Kemper. Rick Kemper. I changed his name to Steve for good. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Rick. Rick's funeral was right here. Uh, Jim Steele was <coughs> here. Uh, Martin Dennis and myself. Uh, and we took Rick across the road. He's buried 
at the Springbank Cemetery across the highway. So I've been around Jim Steele for these years. And Wednesday, I looked at the newspaper where his obituary was, or his name was listed. I don't know if his obituary was in the Wednesday paper. But I counted the number of names in the obituary, and there were 10 names. And it, it struck me that no matter how we perceive what's going on with virus, flu, or whatever, pneumonias too, and cancer, and all of these things that give us heart attacks, it seemed like a lot of people. And so when I was downtown Wednesday and we were putting door hangers out for invitations to the turkey lunch at Tyler, I mentioned to the fellow that was walking alongside me, I said, I looked at the paper, there were 10 people in the obituary. And he, kept, he said, yeah, I counted it too. It just seemed like so many. There are people going home. Now, is everybody that's going home, going home to paradise with Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty in the realms of glory? Well, I don't know. I hope and pray that they all are, that they might hope. But we know that there are people around us that have turned their back on God. They've turned their back on living lives that are moral. They've turned their backs on telling the truth. We see it every day. We know that violence is running rampant everywhere. And we know that uh, we know that it's kind of scary. And many of us have had our cycle of COVID and recovered. And some of our beloved that, that were in the pews with us here had their, they had COVID and they went home. Now I can say that about the ones I know because I've been praying for them and we all have been praying for them. And when we get together, it's my heartfelt feeling that we belong to Jesus. And, but we need to remember that Jesus said to the thief on the cross that repented, the repentant criminal, that today you be with me in paradise. Meaning that upon the death of their earthly bodies, that their spirits, their souls, would be together on the other side. The, the veil in the temple split apart that day when Jesus was hanging on the cross. There was a huge storm that came up. We know all that. And we know that this criminal on the cross in those few minutes, those few hours before the soldiers came to break their legs and they poked Jesus in the chest with the spear, we know that he very likely didn't have time to love his neighbor as himself. The only thing he had time to do was just say to Jesus, remember me. Now, I reflect on that and I want you to reflect on it in these few minutes that we're together today. That, and understand in your heart that repentance makes us connected to each other, to God, and to Jesus. And that's why we need to remind ourselves at least this once a year before Advent and before we have all the Christmas celebrations, that we are a people that trust in God's love. We trust that when we repent, we belong to God. And 
There may be some denominations that teach complicated things about being asleep in Christ and waking up and the, there will be the trumpets and we know that the graves will be opened. Yes, all those things are going to happen. But as far as I'm concerned, the theology that we teach, the doctrine that we focus on is a repentant criminal that says to Jesus, remember me. And when we all say, remember me, dear Lord Jesus, we too can claim, because if Jesus said it, it's, it's for certain. He said, today you'll be with me in paradise. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for your love, mercy, and grace. We give thanks that you sent your son, Jesus. And as we prepare our hearts to look to the future, let us always know. Let us always share. Let us always be comforted that Jesus said to the repentant thief, today you'll be with me in paradise. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Number 131 in the red hymnal, we gather together, and then we'll sing the doxology, and then you can start having fun with hanging of the greens and having lunch. Did someone bring those on? Hmm? Yes. Lasagna. I knew I heard lasagna.